Come on in. Shamai, an updated tour of my YouTube studio today. So 2021. So if you've ever wondered how I can suddenly have a ukulele magically appear. Or how the lights behind me change colour. I'll try and answer some of your questions today. So just over a year ago, end of March um, 2020, I did my first YouTube studio tour. I hadn't actually been making videos very long. Um, so I thought it'd be fun just to look today to see what has changed, what hasn't changed, and maybe how some things have improved. So just a little bit more info. Um, obviously, I started this channel in November 2019 um, and it got monetized about June last year, 2020. So since the last time or the first time I sort of did this video showing the room um, and my studio, I have had a little bit of income from those nasty adverts. Um, and I'll show you today what I've spent that AdSense money on and hopefully you can see how maybe I've made a little bit of progress on the channel. I am still learning, I am no expert, but anybody who says, oh, you're too old to learn, forget it. I'm almost 50 this year um, and I've learned all sorts of weird and wonderful things about lighting, about audio, about video editing, all right? So it is never too late to learn. So let's start with the obvious things. Um, behind me, my background set, I suppose you'd call it. Um, it has changed a little bit. We've had the new LED neon signs. I've sort of shifted this area around a little bit. Um, the obvious changes would be the screens behind me. I've now got a sort of dual background showing off uh, ukulele whales and my other channel, the ukuleleans. Um, but hopefully you'll notice the overall quality to start with, uh, with audio and with lighting, but I'll explain how I've achieved that. Um, but this is my ukulele room. Um, this is where I store most of the equipment. It is a music room. It's been a music room for many, many years. Um, but today I'll show you some of the little things that I've tweaked. Um, but behind me hopefully hasn't changed that much. You still recognize it, but maybe it's a bit improved. So apart from the new neon lights, I've also had a new monitor behind there as well. And just for information, I run um, a Focusrite Scarlett audio interface USB so I can record things. You might notice actually the top of there, there is a webcam and right behind my head is a large condenser microphone because I actually do Zoom calls um, and live lessons from that computer behind me. Now, if I'm doing um, work from that computer, the camera is obviously facing over there, which you can't see. Now you can. Uh, it's my wall of ukuleles. That hasn't, that's been there for a while. It has changed a little bit in that there are different ukes up on the wall now, but the bass guitar rack has been there for a, a very long time, as has my mini ukulele rack. But that's what you see if I'm doing a Zoom call, um, it's because it's facing that way into the room. So the first big investment I made um, once I was monetized was the audio. I was always aware I started the channel, first of all, with my phone um, and then the inbuilt camera on my camcorder. The audio was pretty rubbish. I'd be the first to admit that. So I, I got a Rode... Uh, external microphone that fits on top of the camcorder, which did improve it. Um, but again, there was still an awful lot of um, room sound. We've got very high ceilings in our house. So something I did do quite a while ago was put a rug on the floor in here. That has made a bit of a difference. I'll mention something else very recently I've done, which makes a bit of a difference. But I invested in um, a multi 
track recorder. So what sits underneath my camcorder is something called a Tascam DR70D. And it's a little track, field track recorder, but I can record up to four tracks simultaneously. So, like now, I've got an overhead um, microphone, which is just, just above shot. Okay. Oh, sorry. I hope that didn't sound too bad. That then runs in to the audio recorder, which, as I said, sits underneath the camera. I can put multiple tracks in. So if I'm recording electric ukulele or bass, and that's coming from an amplifier, I would also have, just down here on my right, I would have a large condenser microphone, and that would run directly into my audio recorder as well. I used to uh, run microphones and things into my Mac behind me, put it in through garage band, process it, add it to the video. Um, good result, but it was very, very time consuming. Um, I was a little bit skeptical um, how much longer it would take to record the audio separately. Very little, because I do something, it's so simple, I clap at the beginning of videos. Then what happens, once I finished recording, I'll get the two SD cards, one from my camcorder, one from the audio recorder. They will then both go into my video editor. I match up that magic clap and it is really quite simple. Now, hopefully you'll notice the difference. At the minute, the overhead mic is working, which as I said, is placed just there. Now I've turned off the overhead mic, so it is only going through the road mic, which is on top, which is quite a distance, okay, from, I'm reaching as if I'm touching it, I'm nowhere near touching it, there's another, I don't know, two or three feet, okay, um, there you are, the overhead mic is back on now, but hopefully you'll hear the difference, and it's, you know, I, I've gone up in progressions, my audio was awful to start with, got a little bit better, it's not perfect, all right? I haven't bought the most expensive equipment. I can't, I can't afford to, I, you know, to invest too much. I've got what I can at the minute. So the audio now, overhead mic, um, sometimes a mic going straight from an amp into the Tascam, which records it onto an SD card, which I then uh, sync up when I'm editing the video. So the Tascam was the first thing I got. The next thing was actually this Samsung CO2 microphone. Um, to start with, I was using a really rubbish uh, mic from school um, just to get me started. The Samsung is not expensive. Um, I bought the two of them. There was a pair, a matching pair for under £100. So audio isn't perfect, but hopefully it is a lot better. Um, which sort of leads me on to the next thing. I'll talk about lighting in a second because it's also to do with this. Um, I couldn't film in this room for a couple of weeks. In fact, my last two videos have been uh, recorded downstairs in my other music room. We had a fight with a curtain pole. Um, I decided it was time to invest in some blackout curtains. Um, up until now, or in the last week, I've only really been able to record late afternoon evenings, depending on the light, because I'm actually looking at the window directly behind um, this camera is a window. And in the morning, it is full sunlight. You haven't got a hope of recording anything, especially because I wear glasses. Um, but I was finding it was getting later. And as you, you know, I'm, we're into spring now, beginning of May, I was having to wait later and later before I could start recording things. So I thought, right, okay, blackout curtains, and they do black the room out, I promise you. But they also help with the sound. So I've put the rug in this year and the blackout curtains. I don't know if it'll make much difference with the audio now. This is actually the first video I've made since the curtains have gone up, but it'll be interesting to see but in terms of reflection of my glasses, it means I can film first thing in the morning 
and it really doesn't affect um, any reflection. So back to lighting. Um, now I've had the LED strip lights behind those monitors now from the word go. It was something I really liked the idea of being able to change the colors. Um, but what I was noticing, especially certain times of the day when I was filming, um, it would be very light in here and those LEDs would sort of get lost or a little bit washed out. Um, so the next thing that I invested in, I was using an 18 inch LED ring light. Um, by all means, in fact, it'd be quite interesting, go back and check a year ago when I did this video um, YouTube studio tour because I was using that light and that and I do actually show it as well. So things that I've got invested in this year for lighting, first of all, is a much, much better light. Again, it's not that expensive. I can't, I can't invest that much in the minute. I'm not earning very much money. So the light that I've invested in is the Godox SL60 Watt. Um, it was one of those really frustrating things. I bought the light um, and it is, it's not an expensive light. All right, it really isn't. It's about 110, 111 pounds. Um, you, this is one of the trouble. You, you go on to a lot of um, videos watching how to set up lighting, how to set up your YouTube rooms and I have watched a lot of them. Um, and of course you're coming across the big YouTubers who can afford to buy the aperture lights and they can afford to have the great big boom microphones and everything. Okay. And it's, a, it's a bit more tricky if you're sort of starting out. So Godox light arrived and then I had to wait for the next month to be able to buy the soft box. Now then the light itself is what it says. It's the light. The soft box is the big black thing that covers the light. And in this case, it's the new year, new year, however you pronounce it. Um, soft box. I think it's the 90 centimeter. It's huge. It's a, I'm looking up there at the minute now and it's, you can see the reflection, but it's, it does take up a lot of room. You do get used to it. But I do think the light you get off it is a much, much better light. I'm only at about 30% light at the minute. In fact, let's try this. So it's a remote control. Yeah, I'm at 30%. It'd be interesting. That's at 50%. All right, I'm not going anywhere close to going up high. I don't want it glaring or really harsh, but a soft box on a light, you know, I'm just pulling it back down. Um, it softens the light and the honeycomb thing on it, that thing that covers the actual honeycomb, um, that really directs the light in a certain direction. And the big reason I wanted to invest in this lighting system was because it doesn't fill the whole room with space. I can really um, direct exactly where I want the light to go. So it doesn't impinge too much on my lovely color behind, okay? So I've got the Godox, what did I say? SL60 watt there, that's my main light, I suppose you call it. Over on my left, I've got a smaller new ear um, LED panel. That sort of bounces light off the wall behind me so it's not direct. If I had it direct, it would again cause reflection in my glasses. And right up behind my head, up there, is a much smaller LED ring light. It's only a cheap and cheerful one um, to give a little bit of light on the back of my head to sort of separate me from the background a little bit okay so they're the three main lights I don't even have the ceiling light isn't on the curtains are shut so if I actually switch this light off for a minute okay I'm not sure what's going to happen here we'll see see what I mean all I've done is switch that light off and it's back on again all right so that makes a huge difference and I feel, I'm not there yet, but I do feel the lighting is getting better. 
Um, I actually recently started discovering color grading. Now that's when you're sort of in the editing process, changing um, the way a video looks. So this has been color graded. Um, this bit isn't color graded. Okay, I, I don't know whether you'll see the difference. Hopefully you will. Um, there we are, we're back to color graded again now. If you look at many of my older videos, they look quite washed out. I know I'm quite gray and I tend to wear gray and there's magnolia in the back, but I am actually a very colorful person. Um, so the lighting, I'm getting there. It's not perfect yet, but I'm much, much happier now I can control. First of all, with the curtains, it's up to me where the light is. I don't get so much reflection um, and I can very much direct the light, but I've done it on a budget. I haven't gone and spent hundreds and hundreds of pounds on the lighting. And I recycle. The, air, the big LED 18 inch light is now downstairs. Um, and if you've watched the last two videos that I've made, that is what's lighting me down there at the minute. So it still gets used. And the little panel light that's over here, that is very movable. It's only small, so I take that up and down. I'm using the Panasonic HC VX870 camcorder. Um, that'll probably be my next big purchase. Um, is a much better camera, whether it's a DSLR or whether it's a mirrorless. Um, I chose this particular camcorder. It is 4K. I only record in HD. I just haven't got the sort of size I'd need for the files if I was recording in 4K. Um, but it has got a flip round screen, which is absolutely essential if you're filming yourself and you haven't got anybody else operating the camera. So how do I suddenly magically appear a ukulele? Um, right in front of me, I've got what I'm looking at now, which is obviously the camera, the microphone and the light. But I've also got just here is a music stand. I'm a music teacher. They're laying around everywhere. Um, on that music stand, I tend to keep any... I don't write scripts. Um, as you know by now, I can talk for Wales. But I do have to write myself notes out. No different to any lesson that I was doing. So in front of me is a script or a notes for this video and also a little hanger for my ukulele. So it just means that if I want to grab a ukulele, and in fact, I've got a double hook on there so I can have a couple of ukes. I'm hands free. I've got a uke. I'm hands free. And that is all within very easy reaching distance. Now I do show this in my previous YouTube studio video. Um, I don't do as much green screen as I was doing and I wish I had time to do more, but basically this wall here behind me, that's where the green screen hangs. Um, and then you've got a few different lights and things because you've got to have light in between you and the green screen. Um, it can be blue as well, all right? But if I'm filming anything to do with green screen, so in other words, I'm stood there and suddenly I'm appearing in front of one of my play along videos or in front of, I don't know, the Eiffel Tower, whatever I fancy being, that's where the green screen hangs on this wall here. Um, and then that all gets edited out uh, when I'm making the video. I don't go into that corner very much over there. That's actually where my electric double bass and cello sit. Um, I, as I said, I'm quite colorful. I do enjoy different lighting. So at the moment I have got one of these sort of LED floodlights going in there and it sort of lights the entire half of that room down there. But just to give you an idea what is down in that corner as we've talked about the ukulele wall and bass guitars over there. Okay, so this sort of area down here in my worktop where I do any maintenance or um, film from above. There you are, you can see I've got a new grip that can sit and look down onto the worktop or if I'm doing maintenance, the grip and my new little mini camera can sit on the worktop. 
it is a working music room. This room is never, ever going to be a pristine studio and mustn't forget everything behind me down here, my amps. Um, these are the ones that I do tend to use, hence where they're all out. I have actually got my bass rigs. They are stacked up my barefaced uh, with Gensler amp and my Mark bass rig. They tend to be staying over there for now. Certainly the Mark bass is for when I'm out gigging, which doesn't happen at the minute. Um, but I am hoping to do something a little ditty um, to look more at my little perfect mini bass rig very soon. And of course, I have done a couple of little videos downstairs. It's a different room. It's got a different vibe to it. I am hoping to utilize it a bit more, um, but that's my other music room. Similar setup. I still use this camera, an audio recorder, and I've got a matching overhead mic down there, but obviously I'm using my older LED ring light for light down there, but the same sort of thing. I've got the color going in the background um, So that's just my other music room, which I am hoping to do a little bit more filming in so with any luck you can see the difference um, and the quality I am not an expert at all. I am still very, very much learning. If I need to know something like everybody else, I go and have a little look on YouTube or go and search for some blogs and vlogs. I I can't tell you how many um, landscaping photography videos and gaming setup rooms and lighting and audio videos and things I've watched just to try and learn at the end of the day um, because ultimately I want the best quality videos for you guys to see and that's why I'm more than happy to invest any little money that I do get from the adverts into equipment into the channel to make it better but again it's a massive learning curve as I said you know I'm not the youngest person in the world but I am having great fun learning all about making videos and hopefully making better videos. Um, so just to give you an idea, this is the one of my very, very early videos. You can see there where the, the lighting has changed. Little things have changed. Um, there we are. Let's actually hear some audio. You can see it's got all the electronics on the side and plugged in at the bottom. All right, so with any luck now, you have noticed the difference between when I started, where I am now. And this is another little reason I wanted to make this video today was for me to be able to sort of keep up with how I am progressing um, with my own things as well. So just, just to give you an idea to help and me to see what progress I'm making. I do hope this video has either helped or you've enjoyed it at the least. Um, I am still on a massive learning curve, um, so it'll be interesting maybe what next year's studio YouTube video will bring. Um, please feel free, leave a comment or a question if you've got one. Give us a like if you've enjoyed. That really helps as well. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos. Thank you for watching.